Hi, I'm Jack Duell with jackinthenet.com and in this tutorial series I'm going to show you how to use Elementor Pro and all of its Element widgets. If you want to see what they look like then go to elementor2020.co.uk I've laid them all out for you so you can take a look at them. And to get Elementor Pro go to jackinthenet.com forward slash EP. There you'll be able to get the membership you want, download the plugin and then upload it to WordPress. By the time we finish this tutorial series, you're going to be confident in using Elementor Pro to make a beautiful WordPress website that gets you the results you actually want. So please like the video, make sure to comment and subscribe. Now, let's dive in. Okay, in this video, we're going to take a look at the media carousal element. This is a really, really cool one. So uh, let's get straight to it. First thing I'm going to do is come on down here, press the little plus button, and then I'm going to press it again. And I'm just going to choose a single column layout. When I've done that, what I'm going to do is come on over to the toolbar and under the pro section, you are going to find the media carousal widget. So just click and drag that on into the page. And by default, it's going to look something like this. A little bit boring to begin with. Don't worry, there are lots of different views to this. So if you come on over here, you see skin, it says carousal. If I go to slideshow, it then gives us a, a big image up here. And then we've got little ones along here. So you can see them, uh, sort of the previews, if you like. I really do like this one. And then you've got cover flow. And then it gives it at a sort of angle like this. And there's even more that we can do with it. For the moment, I'm going to start with a slideshow. And what I'm going to do is start choosing some slides. So you can obviously get rid of ones that you don't want, or you can simply add in an item, or you can duplicate one that's already there. So I'm just going to start off by clicking into one, and then I'm going to click on the image, and that's going to allow me to choose an image. So for this, what I want to do is uh, have a few of the screenshots for my videos that I do. And I'll show you why I want to do that. So if I click Insert Media, that puts it here into the page. Now, the reason for that is this type is an image. If I switch over to a video, if I hadn't input the image here, it wouldn't drag through the image from the video. So what I mean by that is uh, if I just come down here a second, so we've got a blank one, I go over to video, I'll grab the URL. So let's grab this one. And if I put this in, now that's connected the video. But the problem is that we don't see the screenshot. So if I click this, it will actually bring it up and it'll start to play it. So let's uh, pause that. So you see it works, but we don't have the, the preview image. That's the problem. So that's why what you need to do with this uh, is actually input the image yourself. So select the video one, but then click on the image and choose the one that you want. So I think I choose that one. Insert media, and there we go. Then you've got the little play button over it and people know that it's actually a video. So I'll do this again. Let's go with this one, put it in, click over to video, grab my URL, which was this one, and put it on into the page. So I'm just gonna uh, add in a few more and then I'll be back with you to show you how we're gonna style this up. So there we go. I've now added in all of the ones that I want and I really do like this because obviously it switches through and we get to see a little preview of what's coming up down here at the bottom. You've also got the arrows up here so if you want to you can manually click through forwards and backwards and then you can also select one down here. So for example if I want to go straight to this one over here I click it it takes me straight through to that one and because we've loaded up our video link again you just click on this and it's going to load up that video. That's how you use this to show off your videos. It's a really, really cool way of doing it. Again, I'm just using the slideshow option. We could also do this in a normal carousal if we wanted to. If I do that, it's gonna look like this. Then we've got the little dots down here. And again, you can scroll through, you get the idea. I'm gonna go back to slideshow for the moment and we will press on. So down here, you see that we've got the effect as slide. If I change this to fade, then, uh, then when it switches in just a moment, you're gonna see that instead of it sliding across the screen, it's actually gonna fade. So look, if I click on them, it's fading, it's doing it really quickly. So what we can do is come down to additional options, and here you see we've got transition duration. Now this is in milliseconds, so 500 milliseconds is half a second. So if I wanted it to take a second, I just need to change that up to 1,000, and um, you see down here, it says autoplay speed, so 5,000 milliseconds is five seconds. That means that this is changing every five seconds. So 
That might be a little bit quick. I'd probably change that, maybe make it every six seconds or something. But just remember it is in the thousands. So that's what you need to do. Infinite loop means it's going to start again from the beginning. So when it reaches the end, it's just going to go right back around and start again from the beginning. And this is what I really like. Pause on hover and pause on interaction. Okay. So it's changed there. You see that fade transition instead of the slide. But I don't like the fact that um, if you were trying to hover over it, it would still move on. Okay, that can be annoying. Think about customer ex uh, experience here. When tr somebody's trying to use the website, they don't want to be trying to click on something and it switches to something else. So that's why this pause on hover is really important. If for any reason you don't want it, then switch it off, but I would leave it on. Uh, we've also got down here, image size. So again, I've got this on full. That's why we've got uh, the resolution up quite high. If I move it down to large, it gets a little bit blurry on this one up here. So I think on the, uh, on the slideshow option, you do want to have that on full, but just bear this in mind because if you are using the carousal option, then obviously it's that much smaller. I'll show you how to adjust the height of this in a moment, uh, but you probably won't need it up quite that full resolution. I'm going to switch this back to slide. So on slides per view, this will allow you to choose how many slides you want to show up here. I've got three at the moment. If we change it over to four, funnily enough, you see four. I think uh, you can work out how that's going to go. We'll leave it on three and then slides to scroll. So set how many slides are scrolled per swipe. So if I change this to three, we come through. It's moving all three at a time. Okay, so all three are moving on. Whereas if I moved it just to one, then when I click along, didn't mean to click into the video, sorry. When I click along, you see that it's just moving one at a time. The others are still staying there uh, instead of skipping past all of them. So that's what that does. And then you can, of course, adjust the height as well. So if I do this, you see it's going to change the height of it. We can also change the width. But again, I really like the default settings. Okay, Elementor's got this set up great as it is. I'm not going to mess around with it. I think that looks perfect. And the key thing here is that it looks great on other devices as well. So if I uh, switch over, so you see up here, we've got this little desktop icon. If I click on this and go over to tablet, let's take a look. Already that looks great. It's set to change to two. And again, we can go in, go over to mobile, and it's automatically going to bring it down to just the one. Because obviously on a mobile, it's going to be far too small if we try to have three in a row. So that's how you can just check what it looks like. And if you really, really, really want to, you can start messing about with it uh, per device, as it were. So anything I'm doing here is purely affecting the mobile, but I don't want that. So I'm going to put it back to how it was and go back to the desktop view. So now you've got an idea of how we add these in. It's all really quite simple. It does change, though, depending on what skin you choose. So if I change this now to slideshow and then go down, you'll see that some of those options have changed. Uh, so again, we can change the height. As I mentioned, that's uh, how we can do it. So you can choose where you want that to be. You can also uh, change these thumbnails down here. So slides per view, if I change this to four, now we've only got four that are being previewed and change it to three. Again, you only see three. I quite like five. I think that's pretty good. And then you can change the ratio if you want to. So if I change this to 16 by nine, I think that looks a lot better because that is the ratio that my images were originally captured in. And 16 by 9, by the way, looks best for websites. So I suggest you put your images into 16 by 9. If you're not sure how to do that, it's really, really easy. Uh, if I come out of here a second, go back to the dashboard, head on over to Media Library. So click into Media, choose any picture that you like. Then what you can do is click on Edit Image. And this one, again, it's already 16 by 9. I know that because of these dimensions. But if it wasn't, I could come down here and under aspect ratio, I put in 16, I put in 9, I come over here, I click and drag, and it will only allow me to crop this into a 16 by 9 ratio. Okay, but I'm going to cancel that because it's already 16 by 9, but that's how you would do it. So now let's, uh, let's go on back to the site. Edit with Elementor. So let's go back into our widget. So that's how these different settings work. Have a little play around with them, get them how you like. And something else that I forgot to mention was down here under the additional options, I've just talked about autoplay and everything else. Arrows, we can turn those off and then you no longer see them. 
I quite like having them on. I think it's good for people to be able to flick through to the ones that they want. And down here, image fit is cover. If you change it to contain, then it's not gonna fill the screen as much. Uh, you can also do an auto mode, but that I think makes it too big. So I'm gonna leave it on cover and we will move on. So if we come on up to style, here we've got the slide. So space between, if I increase this, you see it's obviously changing it down there. I'm gonna leave it as it was, which was probably around five. We can go to the border size as well. So if I start playing around with this, you see that we're getting that border appear around here. You can unlink it like this, and then we could just have a border, I don't know, just at the top if we wanted to. So if you want that, you can do it. I don't like it, so I'm gonna leave it off. Uh, border radius though, if you do that, you can curve these so we can get rid of the corners. And of course you can change the border color that you want here, as you would normally. We can also change the padding. So for example, if I unlink this, I go to the top, I give it 50, it's moving it down the page, but we leave it as it was. Navigation, if I come over to here, this is where we can change these little arrows. So if I wanted them bigger, which I think I do, I'm gonna have them around 40. That's gonna be easier for people to click on. I can change the color. If it's difficult to, to see them, I can make them black. That's gonna be easier for people to see, but I don't like it. So let's go with a sort of a gray. Let's go with about that. Uh, and then you've got the play icon. So this is what we see here. I quite like the white, but again, if we wanted, we could change it, we could make it red. That probably goes more with the whole YouTube thing. So let's leave it on red and we can change the size of it as well. So let's make it around 100. There we go. And then a light box. So the light box is what appears when you click onto something. So if I click onto this, it obviously starts to play. Let me pause it when it begins. So this is our light box. If I come into color and I go green, that's obviously gonna change the background. We can then change the opacity of that so that we can make it more see-through. UI color, if I change this, go blue. That's changing the X up at the top right-hand corner, just up here. So if I change it over to pink, you'll see that has now changed. That's how you can do that. I'm gonna leave it as it was with both of these. Uh, and lastly, video width. So if I alter this, you'll see that we're gonna start changing the size of our video in the light box so we can have it filling the screen a little bit more. So maybe around 90, I think that's good. But you can see that we have got the slideshow going on in the background. So all adds to the depth and interest. I really like it. So once you've done that, we are done. And let's preview this before we move on to the next thing that we can do with this amazing widget. So let's have a look. Yep, I like it a lot. If we wanted, we could also make this um, full screen. So I think I would do that because my image is being cut off a little bit here. So if I come back, I can come up here to our section settings. I can go to stretch section, content width, full width. And under my actual widget, I probably wanna make this just a little bit bigger. So under the content section, I'm gonna come down to height. I'm gonna give this a little bit more, probably around there, that looks good. Update, preview, and now let's see what this looks like. There we go. I think that's uh, probably now a little bit too much. I think maybe I just needed to adjust the height rather than the full width thing. So I'll probably put that back to how it was before. But you get the idea, play around with it, make it look cool how you like it. Now, time for something else. And I really, really like this, this is, uh, this is quite fun. So let's do it again. Create a section, find our media carousal widget. And there it is, click and drag on into the page. Now, what we can do here is under effect, change this from slide over to cube. So I, I told you about the fade one. This one's quite interesting. So here's our cube. Now we can change the height of this as we did before, and we can also change the width so we can make it bigger or smaller. For this, I'm gonna make it around 90, I think, for this demonstration, and the height, Let's put this around 500. I might come back and change this in a second. Now, did you see that? It flips round and it's a cube. It's really, really cool. It's doing it a bit too fast for me. So again, I'm gonna change this to uh, a second as a transition duration. I think that's a little bit better. Take a look at what that looks like. Um, and also play speed of five seconds. So again, it's gonna switch every five seconds. But that looks really cool. Doesn't that look great, that cube? And we've got a shadow going on underneath it as well. And we've not had to design that. All we've done is just uh, clicked a different setting. 
That's how cool Elementor is. So let's put in an image uh, so we can actually see what this looks like. Um, I'm just gonna make this four sides, I think. So item one, I'm gonna leave it as an image this time rather than uh, having a video. So let's go with this one, insert it in. Item number two, Paris. Number three, London, and finish up with Manhattan. There we go, so we've now got our images. Again, we've got our little dots down there at the bottom, but now we've got a cool looking cube. Again, pause and interaction, all of that is exactly the same. We can change our image size if we wanted, so I can make this just large, but we're gonna lose some of the quality again on this one, so I'm gonna leave that as full. Image fit, cover again, and then we've got the overlay. So we can have a text overlay. If we do that, it's gonna ask us what we want as the text. So a uh, caption is title. So you see if I hover over this, we've got the title, which I have, and you put this in when you upload the picture on your media library. Uh, if we wanted, we could have a caption or the description. So those are all things that you add from your media library when you put in your image. Again, we can have an animation, but this animation is relating to that text. So if I do slide up, then when I go onto it, you see that just slid up there. Again, really, really cool. I don't want this though, um, although we could have an icon. Again, if you want an icon, come on in. We can have a plus, have an eye, can have a link. I'm gonna leave it off, leave it exactly as it was before. I think that looks good. If we go into style over here, uh, you can then obviously, again, change background color, change border size, border radius, that's gonna look a bit weird with a cube, but actually, having said that, I quite like it, because look at that. I've not noticed that before. We've got the corners of the other option showing. That actually is pretty nice, I quite like it. Um, but I'm gonna leave it off for now. Uh, and then again, you can adjust your, your padding. Navigation, these are all your arrows, so again, we need to come in, change those like we did before. Um, play icon, etc. If we had a video, we'd have that on. And then again, our light box. So you can change that just as we looked at before. If we come into advanced, then under background, what we can do is go to a background type. We could have a gradient if we wanted to. So let's go with green to begin with, blue to finish with. And then we can obviously change the angle as we have done before. But now we've got this uh, background behind it. You haven't got much space. So under the advanced tab, we'd want to change the padding. So if I unlink this, give it maybe 40 at the top, maybe 50 actually, and then 50 at the bottom, you're starting to get more space. And that's quite nice with the cube, I think. I think it's quite good to have a background behind it. So let's preview this, see what it looks like. There's our first one that we had. You could use images, you can use a video, whatever you want. As you know, we can click through, get to the one that we want to get to, you can change your animation speeds, and then down here, whoops, sorry, reloaded the page, didn't mean to do that. Down here, you have got your cube. Really, really cool. You've got the shadow that appears underneath it when it's twisting. As we just saw and I learned for the first time, you could also curve the corners there, which I think looks quite interesting. I might have a play around with that again. And we can click through on our arrows, and we can also use the dots as well. So. There's loads of possibilities with this one, and I really uh, do like it. So please do post in the comments um, links to your own website where you've got this, because I would like to see what you're doing with it um, to get myself some ideas, okay? Because I, I think this is a really cool widget, and I'd love to see what you come up with uh, for using it. So thank you again for watching. Post those comments in there, and uh, look forward to seeing you on the next one. Thank you for watching the video. I really hope that it's helped you. Make sure to post any questions or suggestions that you've got in the comments. Like the video and subscribe. And I look forward to seeing you on the next one.